All right, this will be the August 3rd, 2018 meeting of the Metro Charter Revision Commission. Um, we'll call the roll. Jim Murphy is here. Here. Eileen Behan. Here. Narenda McLaughlin. Here. Hal Harden. Here. And I am also here, and we are missing, and we knew that uh, Susan Short Jones and David Wilson wouldn't be here. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes of the June 27 meeting? And I have copies if anybody's missing those. Everyone's had a chance. Let me see them. I don't know if I've got them all. I've got so many here. Unless there are any changes or mistakes, if you could have a motion to approve the minutes. Well, I so move. Okay, I no. did not get a copy. No way. I knew there was something. Can you take a minute to review them? Jim, do you have a copy of them? I think I looked at them. But... How you made the motion? I'm assuming. This is the one I wouldn't have. <laughs> They gave us all a pay raise at the end, that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'll second it. I wasn't here, but I assume Hal has reviewed them and doing right. reviews. So. so motion by Mr. Harden, seconded by Mr. Murphy to approve the June 27, 2018 minutes. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And those minutes will stand approved. Who's taking minutes? Um, my, I, and I would like to recognize my assistant, Charlene Carden, who is going to take minutes for us. <laughs> she was nice enough to come up here on a, on a Friday afternoon. And, um, she's only been with me two weeks, so, so she oh, hasn't wow. quite figured out. <laughs> she doesn't know yet. <laughs> she doesn't know me yet. So. <laughs> At this point in the meeting, we are supposed to um, read the notice of appeal rights. I don't have the exact language. Um, um, Tom or Mike probably know it, but basically what it says is anyone who is aggrieved by a decision of the Charter Revision Commission is advised to seek independent counsel and has 60 days to file a petition in the Chancery Court for writ of certiorari challenging the action of the commission. Is that reasonably close? We're, we're a reasonable facsimile thereof. So. Good. All right, then we will move to why we are here today, and this is consideration of the proposed charter amendments. Um, there have been some um, uh, revisions and amendments uh, that, that started with Mr. Councilman Rosenberg's uh, proposals related to succession planning and when you have special elections. And the um, what I would suggest is let's take them up and the order that they have been filed, which would be, um, with, with one exception, we would, we would first discuss the uh, Amendment A, which references Amendment A, which is the succession for the, in the case the vice mayor is unable or unwilling to serve. Um, that's That was his, the first amendment, and it's the amendment that says that if the vice mayor is unwilling or unable to serve, then the council will select a person who is qualified to be mayor otherwise and who agrees or understands that by law they would not be allowed to pull a qualifying petition for the upcoming special election if a special election were necessary. Is that basically stated? Today? Yes, correct. So um, I think this is also supposed to be a public hearing. So does anyone wish to speak on what's been referenced in the council records as Amendment A? Anyone wish to speak on that? Anything, Councilman Rosenberg, you'd like to add to? Um, no, this was the result. You know, this is pretty different than where we started, but I think a much better place. Um, so that we're not going through these exercises unless it's in that extraordinarily rare in instance that it becomes necessary um, and, and the way it's laid out creates some protections so that we are really just putting somebody in there who's capable not doing it to get a leg up on the next election and can man the store until we can let the voters decide. 
And I think you pointed out that if the mayor, vice mayor, did not serve, there would be no one to sign legislation or actually transact any business. Correct. That would the be the acting vice mayor does not become mayor if the mayor were to, you know, run off, and we would be have we'd have nobody to sign legislation. Good. So we hope that never happens, but it's yes. good to, but better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Um, okay, then we'll close the public hearing, and I'll open it up to the members of the Charter Revision Commission for discussion. Does everyone have a copy of the... That's, that's, and I'm going by what was published on the council's website, the ABCDE. All right, well, that's right. amendment number one, A. It's, it's amendment number one, which is A. a. Okay. I think my question, when I first saw this and I still have it, is um, the purpose, are we really doing a disservice because someone that may want to run then has to take themselves off from serving, and is that what we should be doing is withdrawing opportunities from somebody that hopefully would have some experience. So I don't know if we're shooting ourselves in the foot with this or not. I mean, that, that, that was one of the first things that came to my mind. I would say this, that I have a little bit of a concern about this, but I think now it's been addressed because it does provide that the vice mayor, if they want to, can decline and then they elect someone from the, I mean, it says if the vice mayor becomes un unable or unwilling to serve. So if the vice mayor says, I don't want to be the mayor because I want to run for mayor, they can choose to do that. And then the council can elect someone who is not wanting to run. And so I think it, that makes me feel a little better than if you just said it becomes the vice, you know, the vice mayor becomes it and they can't run. Now they have an option. They can opt in and say, I'm not going to run, or they can say, no, I don't, I'm going to stay the vice mayor so I can run for mayor. So I don't know that that is his bigger problem the way he's got it drafted now, where you have a process to fill the vacancy uh, by voting from the you know, by the council basically voting. So that's my thought. Yeah. Um, may no, I? No, sir, absolutely. So, so this is only triggered if both the mayor and the vice mayor are unable to serve. So the vice mayor can still slide into the mayor's role temporarily, like Mayor Briley did, and then run subsequently. This only happens if both, this only, only if the council selects a mayor is that person unable to serve. So in our most recent instance, this would not change that at all. Um, and I understand what you're saying, and I, I, I agree with you. I think that since it is such a short time frame, we're just talking about two months before a special election takes place, that the opportunity to keep from politicizing the selection process will make it a smoother process and hopefully not have the detrimental, detrimental effect that you referenced. But I, I agree. I mean, that is a, something that could happen. But what if you added something that said something like uh, subject to three-fourths of the council overruling this? I mean, if you really wanted to, if, it's, if there's some magnificent person there that we could use and not discard him, him or her, by saying something like that? I think that the largest concern would be that you would have the council body giving somebody a significant advantage in running for mayor, that we just, you know, that 40 people in a room who everybody in the city might hate, hypothetically, of course, would then be, would, would be giving somebody the opportunity to really put themselves first for mayor. Um, although, you know, without that consideration, I would agree if somebody were selected by acclamation, it would be unfortunate for them to but, uh, be disqualified, but I think that that's giving the council a lot of power to basically put, make somebody the front runner for mayor. Someone asked me, and I think I know the answer. The council could select anyone they wanted to that Correct. met those qualifications. It doesn't have to be somebody that's in the council. It could be Correct. anyone. Right. Okay. Further Just discussion? another thought. I think when people vote, if you're voting for vice mayor, you are assuming that they would 
act as mayor if need be. And I think just just that itself gives somebody an opportunity to think that they may have an edge four years later or whenever. So again, it's are we taking something away from people that is naturally already there? Um, well, this wouldn't apply to the vice mayor because if the vice mayor, if, if the mayor steps aside and the vice mayor becomes mayor, they remain they remain able to run for mayor subsequently. So an elected vice mayor would not be subject to this. Only if both the, the current, only if both the elected mayor and elected vice mayor both became unable and un, or unwilling to serve, would this be triggered? And then, of course, it's only if there's. Uh, it would be earlier in the term, but so there would be a special election 60 to 70 to five days out, theoretically. Um, and, and Dave, just help me understand, the, um, your goal is to put these on the November ballot, which means we probably need to take action as the Revision Commission today in order to keep everything sequence time right? Yes, my hope is to ask, the, or my plan is to ask the council to vote on Tuesday. Then what I would suggest, we have a couple of options. We can uh, vote to recommend to the council that they adopt this resolution or this, this amendment. We can uh, vote not to recommend this to the full council, or we can vote to uh, that we would support it if a change were made. So I think that's kind of where we're down to now. We're either for it, think it's a good idea, should recommend it, think we should not recommend it, or if there's something specifically we would like for the council to, to consider, we go forward then without our recommendation, but with a, a suggestion, I guess, is the way I would I would say it. So what is the, what's the thought of the commission? Well, I mean, sir, another thing that according, I think, to the analysis, this also would clarify gender language. No, oh, we're, we're going to come to that. We're going to okay. we're so gonna different amendments. Yeah. No, well, I think what she's asking is this particular one does correct a he, his. There is yes. a larger one that's oh, okay. the sole intent yes. is gender. According to the analysis, it does. She's noting that it says he, and it would say he or she. Oh, okay. she, yeah. Oh, it so, does. You're right. It does. In, the, in this language, it does say he or she. He or she. Okay, what's the, anyone care to suggest a motion? So if we send it to the council and then, you know, say, you know, revisions, mm -hmm. How would those revisions then be put in place? It would just we, it would be purely a suggestion. There would be it would carry no no weight as far as um, the council would. They could ignore our. Of course, the council can ignore our <laughs> recommendations <laughs> or suggestions anyway. So, um, but if we wanted to say we would, you know, we we support it. We could say we support it as is, but we would also suggest that the council consider something else. But I do think it's a good idea to have something, if we're going forward with these other amendments, assuming they're going to be on the ballot, I think it would be wise to have some process in the event that the vice mayor refused to serve so or couldn't For serve. that reason, I'll go ahead and move approval as is, and if anyone wants to either amend that or vote no, we can. But I'll go ahead and move approval as is and see what the will of my colleagues will be. Okay. So, the motion by Mr. Murphy to recommend approval as drafted. Yes. You have a second to that? I'll second. A second by Ms. McLaughlin. Okay, discussion on the motion. Well, I share some of my concerns, your, your concerns, uh, but and I, the council, of course, can still look at that. So, I'll, I'll vote in favor of it. But I do, think you're, I think, do think your concerns are valid. Okay, then, so let's then let's have a, uh, all those in favor of Mr. Murphy's motion, please say aye. Uh -huh. uh, I will vote in favor. Uh, one abstention. One abstention. Ms. Behan abstains. The 
so that's dealt with number A. The second amendment uh, that's part of Mr. Rosenberg's proposals is what's been referenced as amendment B in the, in the council website. Um, this is the amendment that proposes when a special election would be held in the event of a vacancy of the mayor, vice mayor, council person, or council person at large. Um, and what I would like, Councilman Rosenberg, would you just briefly summarize? We'll open the public hearing, but I'm going to ask you to go first. Sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, so this is. If they're both substantive and stylistic changes to the uh, infamous Section 1503 of, of the Charter um, dealing with special elections. With respect to mayor, it leaves the situation as is where there is a special election that takes place if there's more than 12 months left in the term. Uh, for vice mayor, it creates a, uh, a special election, the event of 24 months or more remaining in the term to ensure that we have somebody elected second in the line of succession. Uh, for district council member, it changes it from 12 months to six months, the purpose being ensuring folks have an elected representative to speak for them and handle district matters. Uh, right now, that's at 12 months, and we're actually facing a situation uh, right now where uh, uh, the, the representative from District 29 was elected Register of Deeds yesterday, and as is, her constituents will have no representation for a year. Um, this would shorten that time significantly and allow them to have somebody to speak to their issues, somebody who's familiar with them and, and can handle that. Um, we also, after our next runoff election, might have another one of those that this applies to. Uh, with respect to council at large, it does not uh, call for special elections, nor does the current code uh, or, or current charter. Uh, the thinking there being that they are looking at large matters. It's very expensive to run a countywide election, three quarters of a million to a million dollars to run a countywide election, and that for that large members can, can handle that uh, just as well. Um, that's, those are sections A through D. E is just about qualification. That mirrors the current language. F is the runoff language that's currently in code. Um, G is the same, same as code. Uh, everything else is, in fact, is identical to what it is right now. Does anyone wish to uh, speak, uh, ad address the commission uh, on Mr. Rosenberg's uh, amendment number B? Can I get a cop? Uh, if you don't have one, let's go. I do. Thank you. Okay, if not, then we'll uh, thank you, Councilman Roseburg. We'll declare the public hearing closed, and we'll, we will now um, address this and what. I'd like to ask the commission, we have Councilman Rosenberg's proposed amendment, and then there is an amendment to his proposal. It's not a separate, and, and Tom and, and Mike help me with this, it's not a separate proposed charter amendment. It is an amendment to what Councilman Rosenberg has proposed. That is correct, and I'm going to duck out only because Council Lady Allen, who's in the other meeting, asked to be alerted oh, when this is if you would, coming forward. So if you would ask her to come forward. And so while he's doing that, what I'm thinking is... Well, while he's doing that, can I ask a question sure. about this language, and Councilman Rosenberg can probably be the person to answer it. Um, I understand with the district council member the need to fill the vacancy. Uh, I'm a little concerned that six months is too short a period because you're going to have a special election. Let's say that the elect the vacancy occurs, you know, six and a half months out. You have a special election. It's only going to fill the vacancy for a couple of months. Because it'll take two or three months to have the special election. And so it's like, is that really 
going to provide them any effective period. A year might not be long enough, or might be too long, but I think six months might be too short, and that's my concern. I think maybe nine months, you'd then have like six months left to do it, but if you get to six months, it's like you're going to be just elect and elect, you know, it's going to be right after each other. And so that's my concern about the six months is that it does seem to be uh, a little tight from the standpoint of you're not going to really get much of a representative. They might be there two or three months. And so that, to me, is my concern about the six-month language. I'm not, I'm not opposed to shortening the year. I just think six months is probably too tight. So that was my only thought on, on this current version. I thought the same thing, except I was going for eight months. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm okay with six or eight, I mean, eight or nine, but I think six just doesn't really help enough. I mean, I think you, might, you, you cause a situation where you really will have someone who gets elected and then they're, you know, two or three months later, they're reelected, having to be reelected. So that's my only comment on that one. I think that time frame is a little tight. Eight or nine months, I can be, I'd, I'd be okay with that. Because I do think it is important to have the district council seats filled um, whenever you can. So I'm not opposed to the idea of shortening it. I just think six is too short. Was, uh, you may want to respond, or if you don't mind. Um, so, yeah, I, I understand. So, if there's a vacancy more than six months, then there, the election would take place between 60 to 75 days out because there could not be just the way we time our elections an intervening election that would push it back 30 days beyond that. So, the person would end up having four to four and a half months in office. I'm sorry, three and a half to four the months in office. The statute says it's 75 to 80 days. Oh, shoot. 75 You're right. to 80 days. 75 so, to 80. So, so it would be three and a half months That's why I'm saying three and a half yeah. months is not really much. So that's why, that's yeah. my thought process. I mean, I'm not... I understand that. I, you know, it's I'm, a judgment call. Yeah. yeah. I just think six months is too tight. Okay. I'm not, you know... This would be one where, if I were going to vote for it, I'd vote in favor with the recommendation that you consider making it more than six months, just because I think six months is too tight. I don't think you're really helping to elect someone to serve for two or three months. That's just for four or five months. Yeah, but I get that. I understand that. I just think that's the thing that, of all the things on this particular one, I think. And I mean, again, the vice mayor being vacant for 24 months is is better than what, you know, now, which is the rest of it, the whole term. It, you know, it occurs early in the term right now. They're vacant the whole time. So I, I, I'm okay with 24 months for the vice mayor. Sure. But the, right now, the vice mayor, it would, there would be an election. It would just coincide with a regularly scheduled election. Currently, that's the case. Right. But the current, but the, but the regularly scheduled election under the current charter would be the odd year election. So if the vice mayor became vacant into the current charter in year one of his term, that would be vacant for three years. Because the next regular election, the re next re regular metro election would be three years later. You're, you know, what you're saying is, you're saying if it's 24 months, then okay, we'll have a special election, but that's better than four, you know, three years, so I'm okay with that. Um, I just, you know, from that standpoint, I'm okay with short, I mean, having a different period for the vice mayor and the mayor, um, but, you know, I think that is what you get, is you get, you know, you will have vacancy. You could have the potential for a vacancy longer in the vice mayor's office and the mayor's office. Right. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And, and that's better than what we have now, which would be three years or three and a half years or three years. And because everything in, in your proposed amendment is key to the end of the term. Correct. Right. So it just everything is based on when you have to have a, a special election. Um, I saw. Uh, 
Council Lady Berkeley Allen arrived. So, um, so do we, did we close the public hearing or we you know, no, let's, let's not, not close I didn't hearing. think we did. No, I just no, want to make it clear that I didn't think we yeah. closed the public hearing and I just wanted to make sure we didn't because I think Council Member Allen ought to have a con uh, opportunity to comment if we're going to treat this as an amendment to amendment I, I B. Think, I think that's how we ought to do it is to okay. sort of consider them together okay. since right. it's an amendment. So um, we've got your amendment number one to the Mr. Rosenberg's, Captain Rosenberg's resolution. Um, if you would, uh, Berkeley, just sort of, uh, Councilman Allen, uh, tell, tell us, <laughs> explain, explain your thought process and uh, and I think I may have, there may be some question about special election versus general election as far as a wording issue. So uh, if you would sort of explain to us why you have chosen to make this amendment and, and what it does that Councilman Rosenberg doesn't do. Great. Okay. Well, I appreciate Councilmember Rosenberg taking the initiative to try to straighten all this ambiguity up and um, love almost everything he's done, just a couple of places where I, I would have a slightly different philosophy that I would just offer as a point of discussion. Um, my goal was to create um, the opportunity where the really speedy election is not the norm but happens in uh, some cases where we can't avoid it. The, um, what I hope that my amendment would do is say that when there is a general, what I would call a general metropolitan election um, in the state legislature, I think the word they actually use is a biennial civil election that refers to the, the elections that we have in um, there's one in every every other even year and every third odd year. So there's almost one every year except for the year immediately after the election of, of Metro officers. So that if there is what I would like to call a general metropolitan election within the next 12 months, then we would default to that as opposed to the 75 to 80 days that the state charter, I mean the state either charter. I'm not enough of a legal person to be an expert on that. The state says um, we have to do for a special election. So my concern is simply that the, the 75 to 80 days is such a fast turnaround and in that time, under circumstances that we saw this year, that time is what is required for someone to discern that they want to run for this incredibly important office and to put together a campaign and for the constituents to have the opportunity to attend forums and get educated and make a good decision. So I just think that's a really compressed time for both the candidate and the and the voters to make good decisions on really important leadership positions. And there may be circumstances where there simply is no election in sight when we just need to go ahead and have a special election and the state has made allowances for that, so be it. Um, but I, I think, think that there's benefit if there's an election coming up within the next year that is mostly Metro um, officers, similar to the judge's election, um, or, or to school board elections as we just had, that those would be reasonable places to place an election and also save a million dollars in not having a special election. So that means that the million dollar savings also kind of a, a nice byproduct. So that's my goal. I hope my language does that. Mr. Jameson can help me if it doesn't. I've got a question for you. That, uh, did you initially propose for vice mayor of 12 months Y yes, and I'm and not then, sure if I if I messed that up or not. Um, in, in, in the what's what's been posted on the council website just does not. It just says if there's an office in the office of vice mayor uh, is, is vacant, it stays open until the next general election. Until the next general election, and general election covers a whole lot of territory. Um, I mean, I think that covers even more than metropolitan general elections. Um, and. Councilmember Rosenberg's changes that to, I guess, 12 months as opposed to 24. I can't remember. This is 24. Um, I, I have no problem with keeping it to, to 12 months. I'm just, I'm just trying to narrow the amount of time when you would end up automatically jumping to that very quick special election. If I could sort of restate what I think I understand, Councilman Rosenberg's is will be keyed off the end of the term. So that would be what I would call the odd four-year election cycle. Uh, is that right? Correct. Yours would be one year for the mayor, 12 months for the mayor, six months for the council. Or, or eight or nine. I, I would, I would mm -hmm. concur with that. And, but that's before the next election. It doesn't key off of the end of the person's term. So the 
I guess one of the questions that that, that I have in former Metro Legal directors may be able to help me with this, Jim Murphy. Um, you mentioned the next general election, but anytime there's a, there has to be an election to fill a vacancy, that in and of itself, isn't that, a, wouldn't that be a special election? Yeah, I mean, here's the problem, and I think it's, you probably don't have it in B and C in your amendment, but it is in A for sure. So what you're saying is you won't have a special election. Well, you've got to have a special election to fill the vacancy because the special election, the only regular election is the election at the end of the term. Okay. And so, if what by by defining this 12 months before the next general election and saying you won't have a special election, it's like then you leave it vacant. There's not. There is not a process in the charter to put that election on any ballot until the next time the mayor's office is elected, which would be at the end of the mayor's term. So I think when you say, I think what you're trying to fix is you don't want to have a special election that doesn't occur at the same time as a general election. That is correct. On that, but when you tie that, when that, when you trigger, when your language is triggered to 12 months prior to the next general metropolitan election, you don't address what happens if there's less than 12 months to the next metropolitan general election. You don't have a mechanism to fill the saying. vacancy. And, and so I'm as a result, that would be vacant the rest of the term. Clearly not my intention. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it was, correct. but I think You're that's, correct. I think that the problem is people think a special election is the election that, that you have on a standalone basis, but the reality is you have a special election to fill the vacancy, and under the current law, the election commission can elect to move a special election to the same day as the general election if it falls within a certain parameter, okay? And if it doesn't, then they have to have it on a standalone basis. And I think what the language, if you're going to try to do that, I think taking the existing language and just tweaking it doesn't really work. I think you really do have to look at setting out, okay, if, if we're going to have, you know, if there's a vacancy less than 12 months before, before a general election, then you'll fill it at the general election. If it's, if it's more than 12 months, you'll fill it at a special election. I think if you said that, then it works. It would work. But I don't think in the current form it really works. Now, your vice mayor and your council at large work because you say you don't ever have a special election, you just fill it at the next general election. That will work gotcha. if you define what the next general election is so that it's clear what that is. That's not a problem. I think the issue is with the mayors right now, there's a gap gotcha. because if it happens less than 12 months before, an election, there's no language in the charter that says how you fill that vacancy. And if you don't have language about filling the vacancy, it stays vacant. Right. No, so you, just you don't, me. and you don't want that. I do not want that. So, so. Mike, you, you understand, I think you could fix this by just adding language about what happens to the mayor's position if the vacancy is less than 12 months. If you added specific language, it said, that if it's less than 12 months, it's then filled at the next Metropolitan General Election, that I think then would cover the gap. But I think that right now is what I told Dewey. I just was a little nervous about that being a gap in the, the vacancy process that I don't think anyone really was intending, but it's just we need to be careful. That's my always, that's my concern, and I appreciate what you're doing with your amendment amending Councilman Rosenberg's, because the other thing I, I'm concerned about is adopting on the same ballot inconsistent right. amendments, right. Stand, standalone amendments, and you adopt both of them. And so then what? what is the language? Uh, by amending 
Councilman Rosenberg's, then it will just be one amendment that deals with Section 15.03. So the chances of having inconsistent adopted amendments on the same election, and then Tom gets to spend all his time trying to figure out which one he has to apply, those are not things we need to do. So your your process works, but that's that was my concern with it. So. And then the concern that we talked about, six months is, is too short. That's the same concept concept that I had. And can I ask Mr. Jamison to explain what the process would be to repair that and how your discussion and the council votes interact? So we'll submit uh, a, essentially a revised version of your amendment that you submitted to the council Monday. Uh, okay. And they can consider that on the floor Tuesday. Fair enough. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I wasn't planning on speaking, but I want to speak. If you, yeah, please state your name. For Jamie that. Holland, H O L O I N. Speak. I certainly didn't want to speak in opposition to anybody, but I was going to speak in opposition to this amendment. Uh, you know, when we talk about just looking at the language here, next general metropolitan election in A, then we go to B, next general election, then back to C, next general metropolitan election. D, next general election. Those are not insignificant differences. In fact, those are very significant you know, according to the Supreme Court, according to the statute. And it does, it would eliminate, as Mr. Murphy stated, you know, there's flexibility in the special election statute that is given to the election commission to, you know, if it falls within 30 days of some other election, really any kind of election, then it can be added on. Point being that it's already, there's ad adequate provisions to handle it now, whereas in Amendment B, we're getting out of this language and we're using the expiration of the term, which I think is a clear, bright line, not only for lawyers to understand that, but ordinary citizens can understand that. Now, what might be unknown, at least with any amount of precision, we know when the when general metropolitan elections are held, and while we may understand those to be synonymous with the term, you know, there's not a swearing in hasn't happened yet. You know, so there's a lag point from the election. Let's say the vice mayor was declared the winner yesterday and they got 50 percent. Well, when does that term actually commence? So I'm thinking in a regular context, let me get out of that, what happened yesterday. Yeah. In a regular context, you know, elections held, well, they're not immediately sworn in at that point. There's some sort of, of lag, and I think it might go to September because there are possible runoff elections. You know, can that date get, can there be a pinpoint on that date or not? I don't know, but that would just have some uncertainty about it. And my last point about, you know, I understand her concern about the cost, and I just hope that cost consideration is taken out for this commission. Let's let's talk about the charter, how it works, and you know, the people, other people worry about the money. Good, thank you, thank you, Councilman Holland, former Councilman Holland. Uh, Don't call me that. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, thanks. <laughs> thanks. thanks. Um, okay, other. Discussion, um, Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you. Um, and I appreciate Council Lady Allen's conscientiousness and also the cost concern, which I do agree has, has some relevance, and I'll, I'll get into on a later amendment. Um, my concerns are mainly with Section A and Section B. Um, I think that while there's a cost associated with electing a mayor, that there's a price paid to have a democratically elected mayor running the city uh, within a decent amount of time. Um, this year's was especially accelerated because due to court case, that was kind of a one-time thing. Normally, we would have had a little bit more time. Uh, and. I like the idea of getting that done and, when possible, doing it separate from partisan elections, which cause all kinds of chaos. Um, again, displayed yesterday a little bit. Um, section B that keeps the 
president pro tem at the time that the mayor mayoral vacancy was elected and keeping that and then having the council elect in effect an acting vice mayor every August I'm you know I'm not a particularly a fan of um, I think that we need somebody elected in that position and somebody who's the actual vice mayor. So in the event of a mayoral vacancy, there's somebody to take that position uh, without having to do the little temporary job that we just created with the previous amendment. Um, those, those are my concerns. Okay, anyone else wish to? Well, I, I would, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I would just add, you know, the 75 to 80 day, that, that's state statute, that applies to all, uh, all 94 remaining counties as well. And I hope that, you know, getting the elected person in office is, you know, in balance of the cost is far more valuable than money. Point well taken. Okay, we, um, we've got these two suggestions. Um, We've got Councilman Rosenberg's and Councilman Allen's suggestions. We don't know as a commission whether, well, frankly, whether either one of them will be adopted by the council to, to go on the ballot. So my, my thought would be that we could take each, we could address each one without being necessarily inconsistent. We could, we could vote on Amendment B, which is Councilman Rosenberg's, as a standalone, then because Councilor Allen's really is a substitute, it changes his significantly. I think we could we could vote on that. We could be in favor of one or the other, or we could be in favor of neither, or we could be in favor of both. Uh, I think it's just whatever the will. I think we'd be in favor of one as modified by the other, but I don't know that we could say we, well, yeah, we could vote that if it's okay to pass either one, I guess that would be true, that, you know, yeah. we could just default and say, yeah, whichever one you want, just do it. <laughs> so there could be three. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to lay out what I think the. Possible the, outcomes, I got you. Yeah, the options are. Um, because we don't know at this point until the council acts, you know what what may be the the ultimate amendment. So what, you know, I'm open to what the I'll make a motion since I already have said on amendment B, Councilman Rosenberg's amendment. I'm okay with his amendment. I actually like his, his language is from a clarity standpoint, with the one exception, and that is, I think the council. Uh, time period should be eight or nine months instead of six months. That's my only reservation at all about his amendment. So, Would you want to put that into a motion? I would so move. Okay. So, Second. So the, the motion, if I may restate it, is by um, uh, Mr. Murphy, seconded by Ms. Behan, would be to recommend approval of Councilman Rosenberg's, which has been designated as Amendment B, uh, with the suggestion or recommendation that the term of the time limit for the district councilman be longer than the six months as proposed in the amendment. Correct. Is that is that accurately? Yeah, yeah. that's good. That's good enough. I mean, he can pick. I trust. I wouldn't go to seven months. I mean, <laughs> six months in one day. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, would, I mean, I think he understands yeah. where we are on that, and I. I mean, I, I'm just doing it from a practical standpoint. I just think it doesn't make sense to have somebody in office three months. That just, you know, and so. But seven, eight months that gives them enough time to 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 provide uh, that filling in the gap, and you know, so I'm okay with that. Good. I'd like to just make a couple yes, of comments. Yes, go ahead. You second it. You have a right to speak. One reason is we do have the at-large positions, and so I feel like they can and do represent. Uh, so there is some weight that people are not without representation. Fifty years of experience. They're not without representation, mm -hmm. although they may not have their selected person, but their selected person in order to do the job that is expected needs to have an amount of time where they can do that mm -hmm. instead of all of a sudden perhaps finding themselves running an election, which is what you're kind of trying to prevent in another way of somebody having a few months in and having a heads up on everybody else. This is about service to the community and having the time to do it 
so that you really are going to have some chance to have knowledge, experience, and serve that community. So there, there's a very practical reason in a couple of ways, but also feeling like there is some representation uh, that can should be offered by the at-large members during that gap. Good. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? If not, then all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I will vote in favor and it will pass unanimously. Okay, now I think what we need to do is turn our attention to the amendment to Councilman Rosenberg's, uh, which would be Amendment 1 to Resolution uh, Amendment B, which would be RS 2018-1314, I think is the correct number. Does that sound like the correct number? What was that again? Yeah. <laughs> is, isn't, the, isn't your 2018, 13, 13, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. That's what this says. So, okay, so we've got that. Is there um, discussion or any motion on Amendment 1 to Councilman Rosenberg's proposal? Don't everybody speak at once. <laughs> Since I've spoken on all of them so far, I guess I'm yeah. sorry. I I really am not I'm, I'm not supportive of this. I really think it it I think Councilman Rosenberg's uh, approach is a better approach, and so I I'm not supportive of this. I think it um, it, it might work. I just. Not sure that it's the right approach, so um, I'm, um, I'm, I'm not ready to support it at this point. So, would you care to make a motion? To, um, I, you know, if, if if no one else wants to move, I'll move that we don't that we not we recommend not to adopt this. And so, I'll second I, it. I'm not trying to lead the charge here, but. No one else wants to do it. I'll, I'll do the dirty work so we can at least move the meeting along. <laughs> well, thank you. Mr. I'm Murray. willing to do that too. <laughs> okay, so there's a motion uh, by Mr. Murphy, seconded by Mr. Harden, uh, to not recommend approval, uh, not recommend to the council that they approve Amendment 1 to Councilman Rosenberg's uh, uh, resolution or, or amendment. Uh, is there any discussion on that? I would say, you know. If I could speak, um, I just want to check two things. I totally respect your opinion. If the if the issue is my language, which I am clearly not a lawyer, I'm an engineer, I would, I'm hoping Mr. Jameson will probably echo Mr. Rosenberg's with the change to that. If it's it's, more, the it's time, more than that. And that's, I, that's it's, it's more the length of time. Okay. I do say it would be better if you fixed the, the language we the talked issue. about, yeah. which I think Mike understands what the issue is. That's my concern. Without that fix, it's really bad. Right. Okay. So, but I'm not, I'm not voting against it because of that, because okay. I, I, I recognize that y'all can fix that. And that wasn't what you intended. And I, and so I'm, 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 I trust that. It's just, I feel like it's, you know, that maybe it's a little bit too much of a change than what we, from what we have now, and I'm not sure that it accomplishes, you know, that it, it, it creates a situation where we have some vacancies for too long. That's, I guess, my concern. Fair enough. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate that. No, I'm, I'm glad to clarify. Fair enough. Yes. Fair enough. And that it was it was the, the length of time needed to me to put together a thoughtful campaign and not about the million dollars. I didn't want that to seem like it was the motivating factor. I shouldn't I shouldn't have brought that up. I think that's irrelevant. That's fine. Just wanted to clarify those two points. I, I will accept your judgment. Okay, you need discussion. Whatever it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> discussion on the motion? Uh, I would say, you know, Councilor Down, thank you for for putting your proposal together. Uh, I share some of Mr. Murphy's concerns and feel like you need an explanation as to I'm, I'm going to vote in favor of the motion. I, I, I think there's it lends the potential for confusion about when the election will be, and I, I'm concerned that it could. There may be some additional cost involved uh, by not having it at, at a other type of election, but I like the, the clean 
way that, that is proposed in the in the original amendment that you're attempting. Not not that I think it's necessarily bad, but I just think the other option is is better. Okay. So. Okay, uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I will vote in favor of it also, and so it will, it will pass. So this takes us then to Amendment C, which is the... This is Councilman Rosenberg's proposal on uh, the... I guess just to run off voting um, and in light of the, I don't want to sp speak for other commission members, but in light of the legal opinions we've gotten, well, if I could ask you, where do you see this going at this point? My intention is to still move forward. Um, the reasons are um, there's some disagreement about the legal opinions and uh, Mr. Jameson has stepped out, but I think he'll be back in a minute. Um, also, this includes some escape hatches that basically says if it is found, in fact, to be Republican state law that we revert to the other language. Um, I'll go into advocacy more, but that's basically right. Okay. And is, is he, is Councilman, I mean, is, uh, <laughs> Councilman, not Councilman. Call him former Councilman. Former Councilman. <laughs> yeah, right. I get that, yeah. he gets that. He's yeah. former Councilman. That's what I has been. <laughs> That's what I hear when you say it. used to be somebody. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm better now than I was. <laughs> somebody asked me that once in the grocery store. Did you used to be somebody? <laughs> oh, man. How'd you answer? I said, I think I am still somebody. <laughs> Almost as bad as Lamar Alexander going into the convenience store on Lamar Alexander Boulevard and someone asked him, Did your mama name this road? Did your mama name you after this road? <laughs> <laughs> and that I had, I had yeah. heard. <laughs> uh, so Mike, while you were out, we were. Um, I had asked Councilman Rosenberg a lot of these legal opinions, both from Metro Legal as well as from uh, Mark Goins at the, at the state. It, that changed his intentions, and he, he said that there may be some question about the legal opinion. Is there something you'd like to address on that? I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but since, since Dave mentioned your name, I sure. thought we would ask. Um, a couple of things. There's, uh, there is a letter from Mark Goins. It's not... Uh, an official, uh, it's not an appellate decision, in other words. Uh, he relies heavily on, on two statutes, uh, the first of which he cites is a prohibition essentially on recounting ballots. As I understand instant runoff voting, it is not recounting ballots. In fact, the entire purpose <laughs> of instant runoff is to avoid the recounting uh, and, of course, also to avoid special elections and, and the costs thereof. Um, it's the second uh, statute that he relies most heavily on, which essentially limits voters to casting ballots for the number of positions there are to cast votes for. And if you, if you interpret that to mean that instant runoff voting is casting multiple ballots, then you're stuck. If you, if you don't interpret it that, that they're not casting, say, in a, a, a race with five candidates, you're not casting five ballots, you're casting one ballot with rankings of the five. Uh, but I understand Mr. Goins' interpretation of that and, and can't cite any contradictory authority uh, otherwise. Okay, so then, Councilman Rosenberg, if you just quickly say how it would, how this instant run, instant runoff would work. Sure. So this would uh, apply only in very limited circumstances in the event of a. Uh, as the result of a special election for a vice mayor or a special election for a district council member. So very limited circumstances. It just so happens that here we are on August 3rd, the day after, had we had this in place, we would have a vice mayor right now. You were a prophet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, somebody would have gone in, and anybody who voted for the third candidate on the ballot, whose name was listed first on the ballot, by the way, 
uh, then they would have listed which what their second choice was, and we would have gone and allocated his votes once he was eliminated to somebody else, know who the preference of the majority of the voters was, and have ourselves a decided election without the cost, the five weeks of chaos, the other dominoes that are going to fall on the council in the next five weeks as a result of it, and also we're giving voice to the 100,000 people who turned out yesterday instead of only the select few, which could be a little literal uh, when we have the election 34 days from now. Good. Okay. Um, anyone wish to address the... Mr. Delanis, I uh, recognize you, Jim Delanis, from, are you, you're currently chairman of the yes, election yeah. commission. Uh, the, the commission has not formally considered this ranked choice voting alternative. Um, when we received the opinion from our lawyer and saw the letter from the state, we did not have a special meeting on this. So. I guess we, we assumed that that was going to be the end of the discussion, but I, I, it's not, so I, I feel like I need to address this. We have had discussions. I am Some of what I'm saying is based on what I've heard in some meetings that is just general conversation, but I am speaking for myself, mm -hmm. so I want that understood, uh, that I'm not speaking for, uh, based on any deliberation or act of, by the commission. Um, we do think there are serious legal issues that have been raised by our lawyers and by the state. And of course, we are, uh, we are bound by the decisions by the, by the state in this. Uh, there is a uh, administrative proceeding going on right now where I think the city of, there's several things going on in Memphis. Memphis does have a version of ranked choice voting. Uh, they've never instituted it, and as I understand it, they had second thoughts about it. There is going to be a referendum, uh, I think, in November, in which they will take away their ranked choice voting alternative. They passed, as I understand it, they passed a version of ranked choice voting some years ago but they said it was, they would not implement it unless their machines could handle it. Now, I gather their machines can handle it, but their city council has had second thoughts about implementing it, so they put a, 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 a referendum on the ballot to, to uh, basically rescind their ranked choice voting provisions. And the administrative litigation that's in the Secretary of State's office now arises out of that whole process. Uh, so Memphis is very much in flux. Mm -hmm. um, another example that's been used is Maine. Maine does have this in some form. Uh, it was just instituted. Um, it's done on a statewide basis. And from what I've read about it, they have had a very difficult time deciding who won. I think it took them two weeks to decide who won the last election. There was years of litigation leading up to instituting it. Um, San Francisco has it. I, you know, I'm not sure that, that Nashville wants to necessarily follow along after San Francisco, but I, San Francisco has had uh, ranked choice voting for some years. Um, there is some, um, some chance now for, you know, what I would call some gaming of the system where, you know, let's say you've got two candidates and one candidate might prevail upon somebody else to get in the race because they think it'll help them uh, split the vote, that kind of stuff. I think this accentuates that possibility because you can have alliances. You can have candidates get together, and I gather that this is done in San Francisco. Candidates get together and say, hey, vote for me. They'll say, hey, I'm running. Vote for me first, but vote for Joe over here second. And is that something that 
that we want. I mean, it's complicated enough as it is, just figuring for the people to figure out who to vote for as their first choice. So, from our, from my perspective, I've said our, our but I, I, understand. I didn't mean that. Yes. But um, simple is better. The voter has to understand this. Our poll workers have to understand it. And the public has to understand it. Uh, there's going to be longer lines. This is going to be, this is only going to arise every once in a while. People are used to voting some in one way. And so they're going to walk up there and say, what is this? You know, how am I, what do I do now? So I think the lines will be longer. It will take us much longer uh, to decide who, who won. We've got this procedure now where you put the results up on the on the election site after you know after the after the polls close at seven, they post the results, and the media gets that and they make a call. I don't think that's going to work. That's, that'll be completely out the window. The the decision is going to be probably announced. Who knows? You know. Who knows when, but it's going to be announced at the election commission, and then it's going to be a while before we can certify, and all that will be up in the air. That's what happened in Maine. It was several, it was at least two weeks uh, from reading the newspaper accounts before they knew who had won the election. You can have the person who gets the most votes not win. You could even have, as I understand it, the person that gets the third number of first place votes wins. So you can have some anomalous results from this. Uh, when I read this, I didn't understand it. I did not understand the provisions as written. Now, I understand the concept, but the language in this amendment, I didn't understand. I don't think our lawyer, Ms. Ecke, understood it. It's, it's very difficult to understand. So what, you've got to imagine if you've got a close vote, you've got a room, you've got a, a counting board of people. You know, you're counting the paper ballots. The machines I gather can handle this, but we have sometimes a significant number of paper ballots, provisional ballots, military ballots, overseas ballots. So you're going to have our people sitting around a room trying to apply this. And it's going to take a long time in a big election. It just, it just could. Um, so there's that. Um, let's see. If the language is difficult and confusing, and, and I personally think it is, what happens to us when we litigate? What happens to us when we litigate, when we have a, when, when our lawyers have told us it's illegal? How are we going to defend a process where our lawyers have our, our, and the state is already on the record saying they don't think it's legal? Um, aren't there better alternatives? Almost every vote we take is a winner-take-all. You know, we've decided under our charter to do to do majority only and to have runoffs. And is that what we want to do? We want to institute a, another procedure. So we're going to have three kinds of procedures now. I just think I just think there's it's just too much. It's just too much complication. Um, so. I may have some other thoughts here, but basically those those are my thoughts, that simple is better and this is just going to be hard to apply uh, for us. I mean, we have a hard enough time getting people to understand the process now. This, this injects a whole different kind of voting uh, that every once in a while we're going to have to institute and we just think it's going to be difficult for us to, to implement. I said we. I think that we'll discipline. Yeah. We, we will make sure the minutes clearly reflect sure. the views of again, the, the speaking, opinions you state are not necessarily right, those of the commission or that are yours. But of course, we, you know, we, we've been fairly busy. I have not wanted to bring this up at a meeting unless we had 100% uh, involvement by all the commissioners, and, 
we, we can meet if this is if it's uh, we can meet and discuss this and deliberate on it and come forward as a full commission. And I think if, if you're interested in that, I think that would you know your request would not be directed to us. It would be sure. directed to the council and those who will ultimately be making a decision. Our role is to vet and make a recommendation one way or the other on the on the proposal. So I saw others who wish to... Uh, Mr. Chair, can I ask Mr. Delay oh, sure. a couple Absolutely. questions yes. so that we can... Yes. So first, from just from a technological standpoint, I think I heard you say that our equipment today could do that. Is that correct? We think so, yes. Uh, there is Mr. a cost sure. issue. Uh, we have some really good machine operators who program our machines themselves. I understand they're the only ones in the state that do that. And they can do that. They've told us, yes, they can do that. If Mr. Medley and Mr. Reed are no longer with us, and they're both, you know, 30 plus years, somewhat close to retirement, we would have to do what other people do, which is farm it out, and there would be a significant cost to program our machines to provide for uh, rank choice voting. So then my next question is, do you have to get the state's approval for the form of your ballot? Yes. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Donis, do you know what would happen if this were passed there was no lawsuit to stop it, and if a ballot was to be prepared and the state rejected it, is that something that could happen? I'm just trying to yeah, kind of think through the, yes. the process. Right. I don't know what would happen. It's, I don't think it's happened before. Okay, others who wish to address the commission? <laughs> Yes, if you'd state your name for the record. Of course. I'm Adam Volareth, and I live at 322 Wilburn Street in District 5 in Kern Park across the river. Could you spell your last name? Volareth, B-O-L-L-R-A-T-H. And uh, I came here to support Mr. Rosenberg's amendment, and I appreciate you giving me the time to speak, and thank you for all the work you're doing. Um, runoff vote. We have runoff voting in Nashville for very good reasons. It is Democratic, lowercase d. And people recognize that, and um, since we've had so many elections this year, which I think have all been good, important elections, there has been talk, not in council, but in media and social media, about the cost of these elections, and so I think there's a, that runoff elections at, at all, in general are at risk, and I think instant runoff voting is a way to obviously save money and protect our institution of runoff voting. And um, I've heard inside and outside there's been a lot of hand-wringing about costs and complexity and whatnot. Those all sound like really weak excuses to do something democratic. And even if it gets challenged legally, I'm sure that Councilman Rosenberg and you all and the council and the lawyers can work that out. Especially, that's no reason not to put it on the November ballot and let us vote on it. And that's about my summary. Thank you for listening. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And it is B-O-L-L-R-A-T-H? Correct. Thank you. I'd like to offer um, the concurrence with most, most of that, but also, uh, if you, oh, sorry, Benjamin Logan, uh, District 21, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> District 21, I think. Last name Logan? Logan, L-O-G-A-N. Yes, um, number of respects, a lot, a lot of, what to um, kind of, I guess, respond back to, and I have my own kind of little things I'd like to mention as well. But first, I guess, response to the commissioners, the commission, uh, chairperson, I guess is the proper term. Um, I can appreciate his, you know, itemizing of things. Although I, it, it's a complicated measure having somebody from the commission itself there. Although speaking, you were very clear about it. it's from, you know, private citizen. Um, I attended the hearing that they had a couple weeks back regarding Memphis's proposal. They are ongoing. In fact, they're actually having the exact thing you just mentioned about a ballot or a potential ballot for instant runoff voting, a hypothetical one in case they have a special election or more in November uh, being designed. Excuse me, being designed. And again, Goins, I think the uh, election administrator there has expressed concerns, and but he is going to review their ballot once they submit one. Uh, the election lead election administrator there is a Linda Phillips. She uh, in Shelby County, she has concluded that instant runoff voting meets legal feasibility in 
Tennessee in general. She's acknowledged there are practical reasons one could like think it might be difficult to implement, but she believes that she's tasked regarding the referendum in 2008, that 71% of voters passed there, to rule on the question of, or just determine feasibility, unless she's instructed by someone outright that it's definitely not, to make the determination. And if so, the, re the re resolution there instructed her to proceed. She's determined that she's required to proceed by there. Um, what she, it sounded like a lot of the determination that meeting also was that the election commission is not supposed to make policy. Um, and I would say also probably not really to necessarily recommend policy or oppose it necessarily. That's the council's job. Um, Although, again, as a private citizen, of course, no one you know, can make that statement. But it, it, it's because the two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when you all last met, there was also someone from the Election Commission here. I think it's important to just compartmentalize that these are not, you know, speaking on behalf of the commission, that these are, you know, citizens like you were made uh, with, with these uh, opinion here. I guess, uh, again, the, the, there's a lot of uncertainty. It's in flux, but I think uh, Councilman Rosenberg has been very wise in how he worded this particular resolution. If it becomes repugnant to state law, if Memphis situation resolves itself, it seems highly likely to do. Um, the folks in Memphis apparently are going to challenge this in court if it's effectively by uh, going and said, hey, this ballot doesn't work. And by, I assume, the next couple of months, there will be something definitive and determinate. So given the escape hatch put into the actual resolution, I don't think that's a major concern. I mean, I, I think it's extremely unlikely that Nashville will somehow be the only, you know, people standing, you know, having to defend something. If it's ruled as, you know, not okay with state law, Nashville, you know, kicks back to the old system. So anyway, I, I, that's, I guess, my response kind of measure to this. But the thing I wanted to open with is um, good policy is not always roadblock free. Uh, and because there are potential roadblocks, and there certainly seems to be one feasibility roadblock here, I don't think is a good faith reason to reject the important uh, weight that you all's recommendation of approval or disapproval uh, will take. Um, and again, this is more about the importance of giving voters the chance to express their approval or disapproval uh, of this measure. It's definitely not outright incompatible with current election regulations. You've heard a lot of split opinions and the ones I've seen. You know, there's smart people who disagree on whether it's okay or not. And I, again, the courts are probably going to end up resolving that. Um, your colleagues in New York City right now, there's a charter revision committee there. I'm sorry, commission there. Uh, they're currently tasked with considering IRV in a preliminary kind of write-up. They actually have recommended that something is the city would like to or should consider. Um, so, again, you're part of a vanguard of other city councils looking at this. And in addition to San Francisco, having had this for a while, there's Minneapolis, there's Santa Fe, there is um, Oakland, and again, the whole state of Maine. So Nashville, again, I, I think is in a, it's a chance to join a number of cities that say, hey, this is a democratically good way. It increases the ability to capture the full range of voters' preferences without requiring them to come back and vote a second time. Um, again, it's cost saving. Uh, we saw that last night that, as Councilman Rosenberg pointed out, we would have had a winner last night. Um, so I would ask, I guess, maybe the, the commission to consider offering a recommendation of the idea of instant runoff voting while leaving it to council, perhaps, to consider or, or acknowledging the reservations here, that there's something in flux in Memphis, but also that the resolution itself, as worded, the thing that would go before the voters would say, hey, look, if it's determined to be repugnant to state law, it's out the door, and that makes complete sense. Um, let Memphis be the ones kind of taking the lead on this. Ex give voters a chance to express whether or not they would like to uh, consider a you know proposal like this. Because again, I think a lot of people, given what we saw last night, the response we had actually, I was hoping to get here before the meeting and actually show some of the social media feedback we saw back from our Twitter account, um, you know, supporting instant runoff voting both locally and the state level. And unanimously, I saw nothing when it was kind of put out there um, that said, oh, wait, no, I'm not so sure it's a good idea. We've got a couple pages of just some of the highlights, which, again, I meant to hand out, and I, I can or will if, if able to. Um, but you get the idea. I mean, the people seem to think, hey, this makes a lot of sense. You know, you're effectively voting twice by coming back for runoff anyway. So, I mean, if that's not voting twice in the sense that that might be against state law, like, you know, you're just, it's a, it's a preference. It's a preference vote. That's what they consider in the countries that actually have it, Australia, Ireland, Maine. You know, it would be considered your 
your preference filter, your slate of preferences. So, um, again, somewhat rambling there, and there were a number of other things in the well, well put, but um, there were quite a number of things which I guess I would technically object to. But I, I would just encourage again to consider the idea of recommending with the reservation you know, the legitimate re reservation that, hey, it's just still getting sorted out and let the council make the determination perhaps how to proceed with something like that. Make sure I got your first name. Sure. Benjamin. Benjamin. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? If not, then we'll declare the public hearing closed and turn to the members of the commission um, for discussion. Um, we You've heard the, you know what the proposal is from Mr. Rosenberg. I think probably there's some angst about the legal opinions or Mr. Goins' opinion and the, the, what is the will of the commission. Well, I appreciate you know, the purposes behind this proposed amendment, but I just think there's too many legal questions and I think of some practical questions that cause me to uh, to doubt uh, the the wisdom of, of this commission voting in favor of this, and so therefore I move that it uh, that it be respectfully denied. So you well, should be to recommend no, not not a, not a approval. No, no. Second. Okay, motion by Mr. Harden, seconded by Ms. Behan. Any discussion on the motion? Go ahead. Uh, I've got a comment. I think that. Um, I've heard, you know, the discussion about what the statutes say and what they don't say, you know, whether that's right or whether that's wrong, whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. But I think something like this that is a totally different way to conduct elections than anyone else in this state does, that if that's something that folks want to do, it probably needs to get state legislation to do it that works out all these things on a statewide basis as opposed to, you know, trying to do something in Nashville when we don't totally control the electoral process. I mean, there is a, there is clearly a state statutory scheme for elections that we have to meet. And so that's my concern about it. I mean, I'm not convinced it's a bad or good thing. It has merit from the standpoint of a mechanism to eliminate runoffs. Um, but I do think as Mr. Delana speaking individually and not as a representative <laughs> of the election commission said, there are also concerns about can you can you manipulate the system? I'm not sure that those are legitimate or not legitimate. I don't know enough to know at this point. And so that's why I'm still a little reluctant to put it out there. I've heard the comments, well, you know, people want it, so let's put it in the charter. But I mean, the charter, this isn't, the charter isn't a resolution of the council expressing kind of the will of the people. This is the, document that governs how our government operates and you don't put things in the charter that in my view that aren't ready for prime time i mean they have to be they have to be i mean this is the this is a document that governs how we operate and i think we've become a little too cavalier with charter amendments that you know are kind of these are issues that we that are the controversy of the day, so let's amend the charter. And, you know, from that standpoint, I'm just, uh, I don't think this is ready. Uh, I'm not saying that it couldn't, it's not a good idea. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying I don't think it's ready at this point because of the, even the potential for running up and having the state saying, you can't do this. And then, you know, and then it's, what do you do? I mean, you've told everyone that's what they're going to have, and then when it comes time to have the election, you get into a situation like Memphis and you can't put it on the ballot, and so then the people don't. The people are going to say, "Well, why aren't you following the charter?" 
So, I, I mean, I think there are some uncertainties. If those get sorted out, you know, if the administrative process works through it or if Memphis does arrive at a way to do this and then they can um, get it on the ballot and the state approves it and they say now, you know, those issues have gone away, I'd be a little more comfortable going forward, but I don't feel like we need to put ourselves into the position of uncharted waters and run the risk that when it comes time to get the ballot approved, the state says, we're not approving the ballot for this, and so you've got to do something different. And yeah, okay, it says there's this provision that says, well, if, it, if it's repugnant to state law, you can do something different. But I don't think that will satisfy the public who thinks they've gotten something different. So that's my concern. I mean, I'm, you know, that's just where I am. Appreciate your thoughtful comments. Any other discussion? Uh, I, I'm going to vote in favor of, of the motion, but I do want to say, Councilman Rosenberg, I, I think the idea is uh, worthy of continued exploration. Like Council, like um, Mr. Murphy, I, I share the husband. Make you a councilman. <laughs> <laughs> like, Please spare me from that. <laughs> like former legal director, Mr. Murphy, uh, and colleague. Real <laughs> uh, I do share the concern that, with this much question about the legality, frankly, I would be concerned that we do something and the state then takes uh, the state, which has uh, legislature, which has tended to tell Nashville a lot of things to do, would then come forward and say, make it more difficult in the future for this to ever happen. So that's part of my my concern. So, um, but I felt like you needed an explanation as to as to why. I was going to vote against it because, in theory, I love the concept and think it has a lot of merit and for a lot of reasons, not just cost savings, but how elections are conducted. So, all right, if there's no discussion, then all those uh, in favor of the motion to recommend disapproval, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, the motion would pass unanimously. Okay, we'll move along pretty quickly now. We've got a couple of things that I think may not be. Um, Terribly controversial. Next Amendment D is the oath of office for uh, to change the Metropolitan Charter to require that in the oath of office that there is a an oath to uphold the uh, charter of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County. Is there, I know it was introduced by uh, Councilmember Blaylock. No, she's not here. Is it, does anyone wish to speak on? We'll open the public hearing on Amendment D, which is the uh, revising the oath of office to include the Metropolitan Charter. Anyone wish to speak on that? Okay, there being no one wishing to speak on that, we'll close the public hearing. And members of the commission, what's the what's your will? Can I ask a question, Mike? Do you sure. know? Did I mean, have you had any communication with Councilmember Blaylock about this? I guess my question is, what is the problem this is seeking to solve? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the uh, recent uh, swearing-in ceremonies that we've had a multitude of, she simply noted that uh, omission. Uh, she asked if other municipalities have uh, provisions for uh, the, the oath to support the charter of, okay. and and there there are. Um, okay. It's not widespread, but there are some. It's a it's a mix, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair, I'll move approval. I mean, I don't see any problem with doing that. I think if there's a mix and we want to be in the mix, I mean, being in the mix doesn't create any problem for me. Yeah. So I'm, I'm okay with it. I'll move Good. Okay. Is there a second? A second. Second? All right. So Mr. Murphy moves and Ms. McLaughlin seconds. Any discussion? If there's no discussion, then all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? I will vote in favor. That will pass unanimously. So we will recommend to the council adoption of that amendment. Uh, the next one is uh, Amendment E, which would extend the uh, term limits for the Metropolitan Council from uh, two four-year terms to a maximum of three four-year terms um, and would contain the other language that's uh, currently in the charter about notifying 
the send in a, res, a resolution to the Davidson County delegation and to the our representatives um, leaves that all in place. You may remember that there was a charter amendment that passed several years ago that limited, it used to be that the mayor was limited to three terms, council members were unlimited in this past, I think it was in 95. Oh, I was on there were at you that on, time. Was, was it in 95? Mm -hmm. 94, 95, right around, yeah. So I don't feel this is uh, Council Member Blaylock. She is not here. So we have this charter amendment that would, in, in substance, add a, a third term for council members. Anyone wish to speak on that? Okay. No one wishing to speak will declare the public hearing closed, and I'll open it up to the members of the commission for discussion. Anyone have any thoughts? Well, I, I think it's this? a good idea. I, I thought it's a good idea for years and years and years. I, we, I used to argue with uh, Senator Fred Thompson about this. He was all <laughs> in favor of it. Uh, and I, 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 I mean, if you have good people and uh, th th that are in the council with their expertise, and, and I believe that people should have the option of voting for them, and I, I'm just very much in favor of extending the term. Would you like to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve it. To recommend that. Okay, motion by Mr. Harden to approve. We have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Behan. Any discussion on the motion? Yeah, I've got some discussion. One, I'm opposed, I'm opposed to term limits for council members in general, so this is better than what we have now, so I'm supportive of that. I really think we need to delete sections C and D and send in these stupid letters to people about term limits. I think that's just crazy. It's, it was put in the original petition way back when, and, and, and you know, so my recommendation to the council is consider deleting subsections C and D because I just don't think, I think it's a waste of the clerk's time. And I mean, we've been doing it, I guess, for the last umpteen years and they haven't gotten the message. So, you know, why continue? So that would be my comment is that I would recommend approval, but I would strongly suggest deleting subsection C and D because I don't think they... Do you wish to make that as a, an amendment to the motion? Yes, I do. As a sponsor, I agree with that. Okay, so the motion then would, would be and recommend deletion of items C, C and D. D. I'm, I'm sorry that um, someone, the, 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 the author of the motion is not here because I'm curious as to whether there was any thought given to perhaps making it more palatable to the people to leave those things in. I just am I, I curious about it. I'd love I to know. I don't know. know. And, and, Jameson and, and the or, reality, I don't <laughs> think anybody would. <laughs> promoting everybody. <laughs> I wouldn't call it. I would say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, uh, it was raised with the council lady. I'm a bit of a bind because I don't know what she wants repeated here. Uh, it was, you know, we could have just left this at A and B and left it alone, but it was intentionally put in there uh, for purposes of generating this very discussion. I will say that the clerk <laughs> dutifully has it on their word processor and they <laughs> send it out every year as instructed, but so far no response. No. I just think it's I just think it's you know it's imposing a burden on our clerk that has no benefit and you know it has no you know, I, I remember when it was put on and I thought it was silly then and I think it's silly now. So <laughs> If I'm going to recommend in favor, I don't really like to not recommend in favor of C and D. So. Good. All right. Any Just further? To mention it. I, my experience on the council was I was elected in '95, so I did have the institutional memory of people uh, that were had been sitting on the council for a while. And so when the next group came in, my second term, they were lived with the few of us that only had four years of experience. Our charter is amazing in so many ways. I mean, we, we know that the strength of it, the control of the power, is the mayor's office. We know that because if we don't have a budget that we approve by June 30th, it's going to be the mayor's. Uh, but I think that we also saw how more power would ended up with department heads when you didn't have institutional memory on the council. 
And so I think this goes back to strengthen one of the elements of the original charter. So I'm glad to see some change. And can I just make one more comment? Sure. We're wasting our time. I know this will <laughs> yeah. fail. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, <laughs> why not? That's not, that's not why we're here. We're not here to say what's going to pass or fail. What we're really here for is to provide our judgment about a charter amendment. Mm -hmm. And I, I totally agree with my colleague because, in fact, it really makes it where council members have much less ability to influence the government because in their first term they really are learning what they're doing and in their second term they're lame ducks. Yeah. And so <laughs> they really don't have three terms is, is probably okay. I, I mean, you know, that, that your 12 year, well, that's okay. But I do think it really does a disservice to the council to have a two-year term limit because really you have people who about the time they really get to be effective, they're gone. And so for me, three's better than two, none's better than any, but we're not, that's not before us, so I'm okay with it. But I think that really is important, that, that getting good experienced council folks uh, it, it is a value that we have, you know, it's, it's, we struggle with it because, I, you know, anyone you talk to that's been in the council will tell you it takes at least two to three years to figure out what's going on. There's not a book you can read. There's no, there's no real manual on how to do this. And so you really do have to do a lot of on-the-job training, and that takes a while. So. Good. Well, and I, I agree, and it's uh, uh, like Jim. I'm not sure that if the public will will see it that way, but uh, I have shared the concerns that you lose that institutional knowledge. And two two terms is not enough. As you say, you, you learn your first term, you're a lame duck your second term. The danger is that for, for those individuals who are looking to the next office in their second term, then they're looking to right. see what they're going to run for next time around. Uh, I just think it is bad government to, to limit council people to to two terms, so I, uh, I share the concern and would love to see it with no limits, but three is better than better than two. So, if there's no more discussion, then we'll vote on the motion to recommend approval and recommend that the removal of items C and D. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Okay, we're down to we're getting close to the end. We're down to Amendment F, which um, is the amendment that would change every instance of, of his to replace it and, and he with he and she or his or her. Um, I guess Councilman Jameson, I mean, I'm sorry, guys. Mayor Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm so used to when you were in the council. Uh, Metro Council Council, <laughs> Jameson. Um, I understood there was some, perhaps some discussion about not having the entire Correct. 54 provisions, whatever it was, 60 pages, that there was some thought of perhaps limiting it to a paragraph in the, at the beginning of the end that would Correct. Had a very helpful discussion with uh, Mr. Delanis uh, earlier today, and um, the historically the charter amendments are prepared where you repeat verbatim the the text you're proposing to change, showing the changes depicted therein. So we took that approach here, um, and it resulted in 51 pages and 120 separate subsections. It'll be very easy for us to convert that into three sentences that say every he shall now read he or she and so forth. Um, so we anticipate with the sponsor's uh, uh, willingness uh, an amendment to that effect. And so then, just so I'll understand that, if, if that then passes, then by when the charter is printed, it would then change every he to he or she and every him to him or her, is that? Correct, and a few other quirks. Policeman would be police, police officer, officer and so forth. And councilman would be council person? Member. Council, mem council member. Yes. Okay. Do we have that? Um, no. You do not have that amendment. No, that just came up today because it, it was, and I'll let Jim speak here, but that is a physical impossibility for their system to, to digest. So um, I have not prepared it, and we'll, we'll have that Monday morning, if not sooner. 
Okay. So what uh, what I would suggest is what we have is the amendment that's 51 pages. Let's have the public hearing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Anyone wish to speak on the... I was getting ahead of myself. <laughs> I knew you were. That's why I was going to start. Yeah, thank down. you for reminding me. Uh, yes, sir. I like this amendment. That's all. Good. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So, that was nice. <laughs> All right, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your succinct comments. <laughs> okay, then we'll close the public hearing and Chair, discussion. I would move we approve this amendment as modified by the discussion provided by Mr. Jamison, where, where we basically have a paragraph that says, you know, throughout the charter, whether wherever it says he, it, it shall be changed to he, she, wherever it says council, man, it was, and any of the others, I'm not going to go through them all, but everywhere that there was a change, let's just do Where it. gender is reflected. Where gender is reflected, let's just have a paragraph that addresses that on a global basis. I think the public would be very appreciative of the succinct nature of that type of revision. And because of what you're doing, and it's not a lot of different terminology, it's just a few, I think that would be a relatively easy amendment to handle from the election commission standpoint. So that's what I would support this, this amendment as revised in that matter. That's my motion. Okay, good. Is there a second to that motion? I second. Seconded by Mr. Harden. Motion by Mr. Murphy. Seconded by Mr. Harden. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, then all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And it will pass unanimously. Uh, we also have, and this, maybe this was what the letter was, the um, amendment two, which was... Um, is, that, is there a separate amendment for just for the clerk, Metropolitan Clerk's Office? Right, there was a missing him. Um, but that gets fixed with it's the same thing. It gets okay, fixed. Because so mm -hmm. I had, I had what, what uh, counts, uh, council yeah, it'll member. be subsumed within the... Okay, so we don't really then need to address... No, I don't think so. I think with, with what we've done we globally, it captures everywhere. So if you've missed any others, they get captured too. Mm -hmm. I don't think you did, but I'm just saying in, in the unlikely event you did, they're all captured by this global amendment. Okay. That was my intent, and I hope that Good. will be accomplished. Good. Okay, then I think... Uh, Mr. Cross, is there anything that we've left off? That, Not to my knowledge. I think we've covered all the, the amendments. If there's no further business, then we we'll, adjourn. And what will all those in favor? <laughs> we can stand adjourned. And what I'll do is, um, with, with the commission's permission, I will send.